In this video, I'm going to show you how to comp audio in Studio One the exact same way that you do in Pro Tools. So I've got a Pro Tools session over here, and basically I've enabled loop record and every record pass, we're getting a new playlist. Now I did four passes. So we have our playlist one, we have our playlist two, we have our playlist three, and then of course our target playlist has the last recorded um, pass that we have on here. Now Studio One is similar, but it's a little bit different in that we get all four of these layers. And then we also have the main layer, which is kind of seen as our main comping layer. Also worth noting that you could, for example, completely delete the audio event here, and then you could start comping. You don't need to have the audio event, uh, but let's go ahead and leave it there. Okay, one thing before we get started, I wanna point out that's different, and this could be that I'm just totally missing this preference in Pro Tools, or maybe this is added, or they always had it and I didn't know. But if we take a look at some material that was recorded uh, the way that this was, where we have these multiple passes, if we think about this in terms of a timing reference, these are all relative to each other and linked to timing. Now, what happens if I move this clip? The layers that are associated with this clip that belong in time with it, they're remaining the, at the exact same spot. Now, of course, we could basically select all of these and move them together. So that's one thing that we could do, but in terms of having like a, an individual clip that you move it and the layers follow it, that's not something that happens in Pro Tools. So let's hop over to Studio One for a moment, and I wanna pay attention to this particular preference. So notice that if I was to move these files over here, notice that all of the associated layer content moves with the files. Okay, now what happens if I deselected this, take this preference off and I move this, all the layers are gonna stay where they were, but for the most part, I think this is definitely worth leaving on. I'm gonna give you a little tip. Uh, alt or Option F in Pro Tools, which is zoom horizontally. This is Alt or Option S in Studio One. It'll just zoom from left to right. Okay, so if I was in Pro Tools and I was wanting to comp this, I would basically uh, make a selection. I'd probably hop into slip mode. I would make a selection and then I can use my P key and my semicolon key to move up and down. Then of course we can solo with Shift S. So I would basically make a selection, solo it, play back, one, two. And then when I'm happy with that, I would use a key command to promote this. Now, what I could do is I could move down and I could just drag my shift key or rather mouse click and drag to drag across here. And then I would audition the next set of tracks. So again, solo, three, four. And then I might wanna say, okay, what's this one sound like? Three, four. And then what's this one sound like? Three, four. And I say to myself, okay, this one's the best and I'm gonna promote that so on and so forth. And we would basically make up the entire comp. Now, when we're done, we would see a different color indication between these, and then we could automatically add our crossfades between these. Let's hop over to Studio One for a moment. So if you are really married to comping this way, I've got some good news because you can basically set up Studio One to behave 100% like the exact same way. What we're going to do is we're gonna right click our uh, loop indicator here, and I'm going to click loop follow selection. Ignore this key command. This is something that I've added custom. The next thing I want to do, you don't have to do this, but it makes it easier, at least for me, is I'm going to click the arranger options and I'm going to enable solo follow selection. And we're going to see why in a moment. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smart arrow tool off and I'm going to select the range tool. So now what does this allow me to do? Okay, well, I can make a selection. The Playback range is automatically going to follow this. Keep in mind, Studio One has a different um, behavior when in terms of range selections. It will play the range and it will keep going. But if I take a look at this now, I can solo this individual take. Now, as I use my up and down keys, notice that the solo is following the takes. So if I make a range selection, this will automatically solo this. One, two, three. Notice it keeps going, but also remember that we have that play selected range key command one, two, and if I fire that, then it's gonna behave like Pro Tools. So from here, one, two, now we have this little icon over here, sorry, right over here, copy ranges to tracks. This is option V or alt V. I'm pretty sure this is a stock key command. I can promote this. Now the next step over here, I'm gonna to go to this one. And again, the range selection, because we have this preference enabled, solo follow selection, if I make a range selection, three, four, that is automatically going to follow. Now I can, Rehearse this one, three, four. Now, as soon as I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna promote that to the main layer. And then maybe we wanna have a listen to this one over here and automatically notice that the solo followed here, four, two. 
I'm using play selected range for to if I'm happy with that, I'll promote that. And then last but not least, let's say this one over here. We'll play it. Three, two, one. Okay, that one I messed up. So let me use my up and down arrows now instead of my P and semicolon. Three, four, two. And I'm just gonna basically actually let's use alt. Let's use my uh play selected range short shortcut. Three, four, and then we'll go down here. Three, four. Okay. So I think this is the best one, three, four, and then I'll promote this. So that is how you do it in a Pro Tools style workflow. You switch to your range tool and you can enable solo follow selection. And then as you make selections, it will automatically solo out these takes. Okay, that being said, I think there is a better way. I'm gonna delete everything from all of these comps. I'm gonna switch back to my smart tool. I'm gonna deselect the solo for here. And now let's take a look at something. I'm also going to take my loop follow selection off. The way that I like to comp in Studio One is basically with the smart tool active, all we have to do is just, and also I'm taking myself out of grid mode, is we can just swipe across here. One, two, if I want to solo the different ones, two, two, three, three, two, I'm double clicking, three. four, two, one, two, and we don't have to solo because it's automatically promoting it. So let's say I'm happy with this, then I'll move over to here. Three, four, I wanna check this. Three, four, double clicking. Three, four, three, four. I like this one, three, four. Then I'm gonna move over to the next section over here. Two, two, one, two, four, two. Okay, let's say I like that one. And then last but not least, this, three, two. Now keep in mind, I can also use my play selected range. Three, two, and I wanna just drag to here, three, four, three, four. Okay, three, two, four. Okay, maybe this one, three, four. I like this one, three, four. So for me, it is much easier to just swipe across and this automatically promotes this to the main layer. And then once it's on the main layer, if you wanna addition different ones, it's just a matter of double clicking with the quick swipe comping range tool. We can just double click here and we can promote whatever layer we want to our main comp. Now, once our main comp is done, pretty easy to right click and expand layers. Couple little things to point out over here is that when you do this style of workflow, you automatically are going to get a crossfade that gets added. In addition to that, because there's a preference, it's in advanced editing and it is, where is it? Auto colorize tracks and layers. What happens when you have this preference enabled is that it automatically colors these different layers. So this kind of gives you the same similar results as Pro Tools where you have a color indication that breaks up these events in terms of understanding that they come from different takes. Also, we can see it though over here, we can see that they're coming from different takes because it's on the event name. Now, the last thing I'll point out is Alter Option H and Alter Option G will cycle you to the next take so that you could basically just select an event and I could cycle with uh, Alter Option H to the next layer and Alter Option G, I can cycle backwards. So we can be sitting uh, with the layers not expanded and we can have our main view intact and I can be comping as I'm going. So for those reasons, I think comping in Studio One this particular way is awesome. And then last but not least, we know we have our ARA workflows. Once you're happy and you wanna tune everything, just send it over to Melodyne. And one last thing I wanted to bring up too, before we go too far, let's undo this Melodyne over here. Keep in mind, we have our event gain. We can adjust our boundaries in terms of our edits. And also we have our clip gain line if we wanted to do any individual adjustments like this, just like that. So we can adjust anything that we need to in terms of clip gain and in terms of making these clips fit together, it's not going to be a problem when you combine all these tools. And then of course, let's not forget that we have our ARA workflows where we can basically send this over to Melodyne and it is instantly ready to use in a tuning workflow where it's using the ARA or audio random access. That's it for this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.